Hello, everybody. Welcome to our next lecture. I'm excited to get into this topic because it's definitely a fun one. I've got the butterflies in the stomach here on the screen for you as a reminder uh, that this is a presentation unit and that everyone, almost everyone in the world, feels uh, nerves. Uh, when they are going to present and this is a good thing. It means you a lot that you're alive The important thing is figuring out what to do with those nerves uh, Instead of letting them control you you channel them uh, into a good presentation. So let's get into it uh, the topic is persuasive presentations and This is different than our last unit, which was informative presentations uh, persuasive presentations. We're trying to get the audience to take action on something. And I'm organizing our uh, lecture here into four sections, mindset, delivery, preparation, and content. You'll notice a little bit of the uh, first, second, third sections here are, are a little bit of review, but they're so essential that I want to hammer them uh, home again. Uh, for those who were here last term, you know, you might have heard this before, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it quick. Uh, then the content will be all new. This is specifically for persuasive presentations. I want to remind you of the top two mistakes in presentations as reported by Harvard uh, Business Review article. And those were failing to engage emotionally with the audience and too much information. I think we can all imagine presentations or lectures where there's just been way too much information thrown at us. Uh, that might have been better suited for a document. So let's keep this in mind and not overwhelm the audience with too much information. And also, remember, these are human beings in the room. They just want to connect. Quick three, true or false, nervous symptoms can interfere with your ability to present. Number two, nervous symptoms can decrease over time with practice. Three, learning to present well may also improve your ability in job interviews, speaking up in meetings and in leading teams. The answer to all these is true, and I wanna focus especially on the third one, that if you can improve your presentation confidence, public speaking confidence, this has great spillover overlap effect with other vital parts of your career, uh, either working in a company or entrepreneurially. Uh, also, presentations are a fantastic force multiplier. So whatever your talents and abilities are, presentations allow you to leverage those to larger groups of people, which uh, allows you more options in your career. I also want you to imagine a 10-minute presentation to 30 people. Is that really just 10 minutes? Or is that 10 minutes times 30 for three, 300 minutes or five hours? Think of this as... Uh, extremely valuable time. What could you do with five hours of collective time? And another reframe is that there's actually no such thing as public speaking. Think of it, instead of uh, this daunting idea of talking to uh, a group, think of it as just a bunch of one-on-one -on -one conversations. So how would you explain the concept to someone one-on-one -on -one sitting down uh, over coffee or a beer? Uh, do it the same way. Talk to them like they're individuals, and then that's how they're going to hear you. And it's, it's much uh, easier to connect with someone when they're talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, use the same language that you'd use when you talk one-on-one. -on -one. We're moving on to delivery. Again, we're going quickly through this. It's a bit of a review for some of you. Uh, delivery essentials, volume, you want to speak to the, peop the person at the back of the room. Uh, that way you know everybody can hear you. Uh, add as much variety as you can in tone, speed, volume. Keep people awake, that's the number one goal. Uh, mind your filler words, words like um and ah. Uh. Instead, just pause. Silence actually has gravity. When you say nothing, people wonder what you're gonna say next. So get comfortable with silence. And the next one is eye contact. A good tip here is to split the room into three sections, three slices, and just divide your time equally through those different sections. And as you do that, also remember you talk to individuals, so make individual eye contact with people in the room. For body language, we've got hands, feet, position, and posture. Hands, we want them open, relaxed, active. Uh, you know, we don't want to be rehearsing or overdoing our uh, hands, but uh, keep them free, keep them loose. Uh, whatever feels natural for you is fine. I think what we want to stay away from is fidgeting, crutches, um, closed postures, crossed hands, you know. So, yeah, we want to, at, at the very least, have a comfortable set point somewhere that you feel relaxed having your hands go back to. 
feet have them strong in the ground so just we don't want, want to be shifty on our feet we don't want to be swaying back and forth so uh, as for your position I want you to feel comfortable using the room. So feel free to walk from the right side of the room to the left side of the room. It's incredible how just doing so can really wake up the audience and get a lot more attention. And for posture, we want to be strong, upright. And a good tip is imagine there's a, a string pulling your head up to the ceiling. And that's it's a nice way to remember uh, uh, posture. Moving on. Now, there are studies that say posture has or can have an effect on your testosterone or feelings of self-esteem. Uh, these studies are disputed, so I, I, you know, take them with a grain of salt. But I think that we all know enough through our own uh, uh, the placebo effect and our own experience of uh, how we position our body and its effect on our mental state. You know, if we stand in a strong position often that can connect to uh, feelings of uh, mental strength or confidence. If we're slouched, um, slumped over for too long, sometimes that could uh, uh, overlap and, and make us feel weak or uh, less confident. So just keep in mind the effect that your posture has on your uh, mental state as well as people's perceptions of your mental state. When we deliver the presentations, of course, we want to be open. We want to be out in front, not hiding behind a podium or computer. And as for tone, we're not trying to take on some kind of uh, corporate business tone here. Just use the same tone that you'd use when you talk to a friend. So conversational, comfortable, connected. It, it, this is not theater, all right? We're, we're not trying to put on a, another a personality or play a character here character here. So just, just talk the way you would to a friend. That way the audience will feel like they're your friend. We'll move on to preparation. So a couple notes here. Two ways to prep. Uh, there's writing and speaking and I advise that you do both. So first of all you want to write your script, do the thinking, make sure your ideas are clearly organized. Uh, you know, write an outline, write keywords and do that thinking. The other way you prep is be here. This is, you wanna stand up and speak and record yourself. As you do that, don't worry about reading the script 100% perfectly because there's a difference between written uh, English and spoken English. Often when we try to re, uh, sorry, speak what we've written, it doesn't sound natural because there's a, a, a difference in the language. When we speak, we use shorter sentences, we use incorrect grammar, we use uh, easier vocabulary, more conversational, casual vocabulary. So uh, stand up, speak, see what comes out, record yourself, listen to that, and then write that down and compare that to your original script. And you're going to find something somewhere in the middle uh, that's the, the, the happy zone between those two. You also want to stand up when you practice. So there's muscle memory that comes when you stand and speak. Uh, and when you get up to stand in front of the, uh, the, the crowd or the audience, you're going to be quite happy that you've already got that practice in uh, standing and speaking. Now we're getting into content. And this is going to be supported by some uh, you know, text. You can get these slides, download the slides as well, the PowerPoint. Uh, we're dividing this presentation into eight parts. So. Uh, attention getter, greeting, goal, features and benefits of your idea, evidence to overcome resistance, first close, uh, you summarize and request action, then we'll have a question cycle, and then a second close. So we're going to go through each of these in a little bit of detail right now. And you might be wondering, you know, what are you presenting? What's your topic? Well, we will get to that also in lab. You'll have a, a nice choice of topics and you're going to be trying to persuade the audience to do something. Now we start our present presentation with an attention getter of some kind and we want to wake up the audience, get their attention. Uh, there's, a, you know, a few examples here on the slide. There's no formula for how to do this. If it gets the audience's attention, then it works. You know, you could describe a problem that the audience cares about. Maybe it's a problem that you're going to solve for them. You could state a shocking fact or a statistic, ask them an interesting question, show a surprising image, give a testimonial uh, for the solution you're going to present. Next, you want to greet the room personally. Uh, you know, smile, want to be in the room, introduce yourself, connect with the audience for a moment. 
and then you're going to state your goal. So this is when you'll ask or tell the audience what you want them to do. It's a specific action. In this case, I have a little example here, donating blood. Uh, I want you to donate blood. Uh, give them a deadline. When do you want them to do it by? And a method, how or where. If I want you to donate blood today between 2.30 and 5 at the blood donor clinic in the Great Hall. Then we move on to features and benefits. So you've got to give features of your idea, product, service, initiative, whatever it is you're trying to convince the audience to do. So in this case, uh, we've got the feature here. Uh, it says a quality of the PSI. PSI means product, service, or initiative. For example, giving blood will take approximately 30 minutes. You'll complete a questionnaire and a short interview, have your blood iron tested, be set up in a comfy chair for the process. Uh, rest for a few minutes, then have juice and a cookie to replenish your blood sugar. So you give them the details of the uh, offer, your proposal, your, your idea. Uh, next is the benefit. So how will it help them? For example, helps their community, it can help their uh, keep their heart, liver, cells healthy, can boost their mental state, etc. So make sure you're giving both features and benefits of your idea. Now we get to giving evidence, overcoming potential resistance in the audience. And I want to compare some models of persuasion and we're going to compare ancient versus modern models. And this is kind of fun. When we persuade, we want to use a combination of these. And when we go back to the ancient ideas, we're going back to Aristotle from thousands of years ago. And we're going to break these, or sorry, give you the uh, ancient, uh, the Greek name for them, and then the uh, English. So uh, logos, this is equivalent to re giving reasons or data. Um, you could say science would be a good way to explain that. Uh, ethos is convincing someone uh, because they trust you, because you have authority or credibility. If a doctor tells you to do something or a professor, um, the president uh, recommends something, you're going to trust them. Uh, pathos is using emotions or feelings to convince someone, so you promise they're going to feel a certain way if they take your advice. Uh, telos is uh, the goal or purpose, so if you can... Uh, get the audience to, or your subject to agree that you share a goal, that you're both going from A to B, and that this is in their best interests to reach that goal. Great. And Kairos is the timing and the place. So right time, right place. There's something about right now that makes this offer uh, important to, to accept or, or to take advantage of. We're going to go over these in lab with uh, some really practical uh, examples though. So no worries on mastering these right now. I want to show you, you know, th three of the most fundamental examples. These are Aristotle's three modes of persuasion, ethos, pathos, logos, and just examples. So an example of logos for logic would be, uh, according to Canadian Blood Services 2022, every 60 seconds, someone in Canada needs blood. So you're giving some sort of statistic that justifies your proposal, you know, uh, research, data. Pathos, an example of emotion. Uh, meet Salma, a four-year-old whose cancer recovery depends on blood donations. When Salma was just two years old, so they were tuning into someone's uh, emotional mind, getting to care about uh, this young girl. And ethos for credibility. Gary Singh, a stem cell specialist, says his work would not be possible without blood donations. So there we are playing off the authority of this stem cell specialist, maybe a doctor, implying that he has credibility, uh, he's a smart person, we should listen to him. All right, so those are a couple examples. We're going to move on to the modern uh, persuasion modern ideas around these and they come from a book called uh, by Robert Cialdini and the book's called Influence. We'll go over these in more detail in lab but uh, essentially they are scarcity, consistency, consensus, reciprocity, similarity, and authority. And again we are going to go over these in more detail in lab. All right let's move on. After we give that evidence and overcome resistance from the audience, we get to 
uh, our first close. So really, we summarize our talk and then we request action, tell the audience what we want them to do. Uh, then we go through a question cycle. So similar to last term, I've just cleaned this up a little bit. Uh, number one, you want to invite questions using W questions. So who's got questions? What's the first question? That'll elicit more, more questions from the audience than yes or no questions. Like, are there any questions? So we're going to say, who has questions? What are the questions? Go to number two. Uh, we're going to listen and pause. You know, so listen to the question, pause before we respond. This is essential. Give, your, you give yourself the benefit of that moment to think. And we want to restate and clarify the question. One reason we do that is to make sure everyone in the audience heard the question. We're going to do this just to practice it, even if you, you're sure everyone heard it. Please do that. And it also gives you another moment to consider the best answer. Uh, number four, we'll answer the question. And number five, con confirm you've answered the question. Uh, so ask the, the person, you know, does that, does, that, uh, does that satisfy you? All right, we're going to move on here. Uh, finally, our last part of the presentation is the second close. So the final comment, final request for action. So you just reclose, right? One more comment so that you don't simply end on a question period, but after the questions, you remind the audience the whole point of the presentation. All right. That wraps up the organization section. I want you to have fun with it. Everybody in the room wants to have a good time. They're hoping that you enjoy giving the presentation. They're going to be watching a lot of these, so let's remember to have fun. Whatever ideas you have to do that are great. You're allowed to include one minute of uh, video or audio in your presentation if you want to, and that doesn't cut out of your time. That's uh, on top of your time, and the presentations will be uh, three to five minutes long. And there's a lot more instructions available in the Learning Hub. I'll have those ready for you by the lab. So if you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me to prep or practice, uh, please do let me know. And I'll be happy to help you with that. And I'll see you in lab. Please do the quiz that is based on this lecture. And I will see you next time.